Hey, so I want to share with you uh, my findings with Jamboard. I find using Jamboard extremely helpful and interactive, and there's a variety of ways that you can use Jamboard um, in your classrooms if you're so inclined. Um, so you can do it either collaboratively, where you're making a Jamboard, where everyone's in it and working with it, or you can assign a Jamboard um, so that students all get their own copy and they can go in and work on it on their own. In order to start using Jamboard, it's jamboard.google.com. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. So this one was one I did collaboratively where all my students were in on it together. And when you go to jamboard.google.com, it'll give you like a rundown of all the jams that you've done. Um, you can go into owned by anyone, owned by me, over here. So I could filter it down to not owned by, my, by me, owned by me, owned by anyone. And I've used it quite a bit. So here we are. A um, couple things that you need to know in order to navigate Jamboard. You have your frames up top. They look like an index card stack right in the smack dab in the middle. So you can easily add or detract um, more frames by hitting on the plus sign. And it just is a simple whiteboard so that it'll start out blank. If you accidentally hit that, which is very easy to do, you can just go to the three dots and hit delete. So here we are. Um, let's get to know the tools so that you can start navigating Jamboard a little easier. You have tools on the left-hand side. You have a few more options depending on what tool you're clicked on up top. Um, I also wanna point out you have three dots in the top right. You can make a copy of a Jamboard. So this presentation, you can go and make a copy of it very simply and easily. The newest edition is C version history. Teach this to a class, mark it all up, and then at the end of the class, you wanna go and clear it all out. That's one way that I use version history. If you have a student that comes in and does something you want to erase, Sometimes that happens too. You can go in and open up and see who's been in there last um, and, and go back in time. So for example, one that's been marked up, here's one that's been marked up a little bit. Um, I had students come in with sticky notes and text and, and whatnot. So let's say I wanted to clean this up and get back to what I originally had. <clears throat> I can go back in time um, this way. And then it would say restore this version. I would click yes, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now you have your tools on left-hand side when you are working. You have your pen tool, you have your eraser, you have a mouse, you have your sticky note, you have an image, you have your circle, you have a text box, and you have a laser. So a lot of things that you can do here, and you can bring in and insert images, um, which is huge too. That's how I brought in this arrow right here. So you can easily navigate doing that. You can set your own background. So you can come up top, you can set in a background. Um, sometimes that's nice to use with in combination with the um, text box. If you want to have students do sticky notes and type in notes. They can change up the colors that they want. Or can they can have no color at all. And they pop in really quickly and easily. You can duplicate them by going to three dots up right, top right. You can order them 
So if you had them all stacked up, you can send things to the back if you wanted to flip through. There's so many possibilities. And so, yes, you can use the arrows back and forth. Like I said before, you can use C version history. You can open it up. Um, you can go back in time. If I wanted to just restore back to my blank copy. Okay, so next up we have the pen tool and eraser that is found here. So if I click and hold on the pen tool, you have pen, marker, highlighter, and you have a brush tool. You also have six colors choices to work from. Um, pen tool and a tip and trick using pen tool. Sometimes when you're writing, it's not a straight line. And um, I just got lucky there. Um, but if you hold on shift key on your keyboard, you can get a straight line. Little tip and trick. Marker. Marker is a little thicker. Very similar. Again, that shift key is a blessing when you're doing like graphs and stuff. Highlighter. Highlighter is a little thicker and you can also build up value. And then you have brush. Brush is also one that you can build up and add more and more color to it if you want. Eraser, you can go in and erase. Unfortunately, there's no capability just yet to make your, your eraser bigger. So this does sometimes take time and that's where the version history is super transformative. You don't have to sit there and waste time erasing something. You could easily just go back to your last version and then just hit restore and restore. So if a student did something you didn't like, you can go right in there and re restore it. Um, so again, I keep arrowing through my presentation using the index cards up top. Next up, we have the shapes tool. So the shapes tool um, is right here. So I could use the shapes tool to get started on a graph if I wanted to make an X and Y access. Um, like I mentioned up top, you have different options depending on what tools you're clicked on. So if you're on the shapes tool and you click select a shape, you have options to fill it in and have a border by going up top to fill color. And it's those six colors that I mentioned before, black, blue, green, yellow, red, and white. You have border options. So if you want a different color border, again, there's no thickness, thinness capability yet. I guarantee that they will build that in in the future um, and code that in. You could also just use your brush tool. Um, sorry, not brush tool probably pen or marker tool. If you wanted to do a graph using shift key would be your, your best bet for those straight lines. That still isn't straight, but you get the idea. <laughs> so the more you experiment, you kind of figure out what works best. And again, I didn't have shift key held down, so hold it down then make your straight line that will give you what you want and then you can add in the arrows and whatnot um coming over here um more shapes tool options um you can have students build things so you could easily have them build like a snowman or you know whatever it is that you're trying to do. Maybe you're trying to have them talk about colors um, in a science experiment, etc. You can also bring in shapes by going to the images. 
and going this Google search image. So let's say I wanted, I don't know, paintbrush because I'm an art teacher and that's what I think about. Um, I can type in just paintbrush, but I if I type in transparent, that's my trick. Oftentimes you get transparent backgrounds. Highly recommend doing that. Then you don't have the white of the background that you're dealing with. You have a brush in there and duplicate. Um, you can't do control D just yet. Um, like you can in Google Slides. I just tried, but I'm sure again, those keyboard shortcuts will be built in eventually. Um, so You can easily have students bring in and build um, a science experiment. Um, you could have them have a map and they could bring in um, different foods from different regions. I'm thinking if I was in French class or Spanish class, maybe um, you're talking about something with that region. You could do something like that. There's so many possibilities. The other great thing I like to use with Shapes tool is right now this is filled in, but I can go up and make it transparent and use it as a indicator. Um, so what you just saw happen is this is not saved as a background, and that's another feature that you can um, set up in yours. So. For example, I can come up top, I can set background, I can go to image, I can find an image of um, map of United States. I could essentially have the students create something like that if I wanted. So like, what is the staple food of New York or Whatnot. Now, if I click on the picture, it's not going anywhere. Students could come in and find um, um, New York State bird. And let's just say it's the seal. I could have them bring things in on a map. I could also do a variety of other things. Like on the previous one, I could have this be um, the background so that it doesn't slide around on me. Um, so, so many things that you can do. And then you can use the shape tool as an indicator, pointer, etc. You can also use the laser. So if you wanted to talk about Wyoming, but you don't want to mark up your, your Jamboard, you can use the um, laser pointer and do something like that. So another option um, is you could do sign up kind of like a social emotional check. Are you, how are you feeling about using Jamboard now? Um, happy, not okay, scared, happy, etc. So now I just want to point out that there's so many um, Jamboard templates out there. Ditch That Textbook is a wonderful resource that I like to use for templates. Um, so you got to think, um, are there resources out there that might already have what I need? to get started. So this one is really awesome to get graphic organizers. Another resource I like to use is Eric um, Kurtz. Control Alt Achieve. And I will put these into the Jamboard. Um, but these are also some great resources. And starting with Google Drawings, um, I highly recommend using those as your graphic organizers to as a like a jumping off point. Some won't fully be interactive on Jamboard. You have to do a slightly different technique to get it fully um, operational in Jamboard. But for example, let's say you wanted to do a Venn diagram. 
watch movie A, watch movie B, B compare each, each other, what's similar, what's different, et cetera, et cetera. So here's one, and then you, all you need to do is make a copy. So when you make a copy, it'll copy it into your own Google Drive. You can also take a screenshot of anything and you can come back to a Jamboard, go to the picture thing, upload, and you can upload it, but don't forget, if you do it that way, it will slide around. If you don't want it to slide around, that's where you wanna do set a background. So I just did a screenshot. And now it's in, then maybe I want to come in with sticky notes and then put in my directions. What do I want students to do? Etc. So use the resources that are out there. Um, there's so many wonderful things already built. So think smarter, not harder, and how you can um, use what's provided out there for you. There's a lot of Facebook groups right now that uh, have Jamboard specific um, templates too. So I highly encourage you to try to use a jumping off point. Um, then you can come in and curtail it and make it your own um, for your own teaching goals and objectives. And that is how I use Jamboard in my classroom.